C.S. Lewis said, we are told that Christ was killed for us and his death has washed out our sins. And that by dying, he disabled death itself. That's a formula. That's a salvation formula, right? That is, a, that is Christianity. Um, so, so the one most people have heard is the one I mentioned before. The one our being let off because Christ is voluntary, volunteered to bear punishment instead of us. So Christ volunteered to bear the punishment of God on our behalf. Now, on the face of it, this is a very silly theory. I'm reading from C.S. Lewis, Me Christianity. If God was prepared to let us go, why on earth did he not do so? And what possible point could there be in punishing an innocent in the innocent person instead. So C.S. Lewis is questioning God, why? I mean, what does it make sense to punish a man who is innocent like Jesus, right? If he can be so gracious, why can't he just let us off of the hook, so to speak? N not at all, I can see. If you're thinking of punishment in the police court sense. On the other hand, if you think of a debt, there's a plenty of point in the person who has some assets paying it off on behalf of someone else who has not. Or if you take paying the penalty, not in the sense of being punished, but in the more general sense of standing the racket of footing the bill, then of course it's a matter of common experience that when one person has got himself into a hole, the trouble of getting him out usually falls on a kind friend. Now, this is a good one. Now, what was the sort of hole man had got himself into? He had tried to set up on his own to behave as if he belonged to himself. In other words, fallen man is not simply an improving, it's not an imperfect creature who needs improvement. He's a rebel who must lay down his arms. Wow, that is, that is, uh, that is really, really, really piercing words. I have found that to be absolutely penetrating you know, we have struggled to really understand that the, the reason I myself included that have sort of uh, um, not completely understood what what the scripture said, as C.S. Lewis has propounded, is, is, is the reason why so many Christians have fallen slack in terms of repentance. This, he's really talking about repentance, so I will bring it up shortly. But... The, the, the word, the phrase he said that, you know, we have fallen into a hole in front of God. In it, okay, we have fallen. Uh, the moral, moral values and, and lifestyle and everything in this world, the whole world is broken and it's cursed. And we have fallen into a hole. So that's why we go out to share the gospel with the people. You know, coming to church, coming to Christ, it's not about being religious. Because no one, no one wants to be religious, frankly. And frankly, I'm not interested to, to be religious myself. I'm not interested in, sh in sharing religion with folks. That's a really important understanding. I want to share the personal connection with God, the God who feels for us. That's what I want to share. That's what motivates me. That's what captures my imagination. If God cannot capture my imagination, I can't serve Him. I can't be on. I can spend six years already now studying every night literally for my master divinity. Who does that? As if like nothing better to do. And guess what? I haven't been preaching regularly for, for 10 years perhaps. And I used to do that every Sunday for about <coughs> seven years. Can you believe that? Seven, eight years. Not in the best preaching format, but now having far improved. But I'm just saying that if God cannot capture my imagination, no one can try and tell me that I should serve the Lord, give up my life, <coughs> and do this and do that. No, it's impossible. <coughs> it has to be from God. If God moves, then I'll do it. <coughs> you know, I... God has to capture your imagination so much that you're willing to give everything for Him. <coughs> That's what... <coughs> <Book of Bible. coughs> Sorry. Ah. <clears throat> That's what 
That's what C.S. Lewis means, that we are a rebel. We must lay down our arms. <coughs> He's never talking about giving up to serve the Lord and God, to be a preacher, pastor, or what, what not. He's talking about just every Christian. Every Christian is supposed to become a disciple. Because Jesus said, make disciples. You know what disciple is? Disciple is someone who obeys the scriptures. Now, obedience becomes morality, becomes religious, it becomes heavy burden now. Most people are turned off. So we must not approach them. When Christ said that, that is the goal. But the means to get there cannot just be laying on. It's, it sounds like your, your, you know, your self-effort to, to do that. You cannot do that. But what can be done when Jesus say that is, all that I've taught you, give you the grace and love of the death I die on the cross, empowers you, draws you, captures you to, uh, to, do, to, to, to do that I command you. And this is, this is what he didn't say at that point in time, but it's all encompassing, you know, in what he's not said at that point. Matthew 28, in fact, he said all over the Gospels. Okay, so essentially, every one of us to be a disciple. And to be a disciple, we must change from being a rebel. Okay, we must change from being a rebel to, uh, to, be, to lay down our arms. If we don't lay down arms, you know that the word to lay down arms. Wow. If you go, C.S. Lewis wrote that because he was in the World War, World War II. Yeah. He was in the World War II fighting for England. And he came back, he was injured, and began to his podcast. That's where we got this, all these messages on me, Christianity. It's his weekly broadcast on the radio. Have a listen to it. He's a. Uh, He's a really an amazing thinker, full of imagination. What I love about him is the imagination, you know. So he said, in, in the war against Germany at that time, um, Germany finally surrendered, laid down their arms. That is, what, that is what his words mean here, to lay down our arms. We're at war with God. Before Christ, right? That's true. Before Christ, our best friend is the devil, and our enemy is God. God is our enemy for a good sense because He loved us, He pursues us. But after we become Christian, put our faith in, in Christ, God is our lover, is our first love, and He loves us. We are His first love. And uh, and the, the devil is our our prime enemy. Okay, so that's how it works. So so what? Louis said, "Lay down your arms. Lay down your arms, surrendering, saying you are sorry, realizing you have been on the wrong track, and get, getting ready to start life over again from the ground floor. There's only way out of your hole." Say sorry, get on a new track, because you have been on the wrong track all your life. This process of surrender, so repentance is really surrender. You've got to read surrender. Like you lay down your arms, what do you do? You raise a white flag, you surrender. This process of surrender, the movement, full speed is Aston, is, is what Christians call repentance. Now repentance is no fun at all, no fun at all. It is something much harder than merely eating humble pie. Mm. It means unlearning all the self-conceit and self-will that we have been training ourselves into for thousands of years. <laughs> That's repentance. Repentance can be painful because it's not just being be, uh, eating humble pie. It means unlearn, letting go of the self-conceit, self, 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 and self-will that we so love, we'll be doing all the stuff. He said for thousands of years, that's his real humanity essentially, okay? For thousands of years, it means killing part of yourself, undergoing a kind of death, it means killing it, 
undergoing death because these things cannot be let be let off cannot be ripped off from earth until these things die you gotta my last video i talked about killing the weed pull down the roots same thing in fact it means killing part of yourself undergoing kind of death in fact it needs a good man to repent and here comes a catch only a bad person needs to repent only a good person can repent perfectly <laughs> this uh, this oxymoron ironic part of it the worse you are the more you need it and the less you can do it you hear what he say the, the worse you are morally the more you need repentance and the less you can do it <laughs> The only person who could do it perfectly would be a perfect person and he would not need to repent. And that is Christ, perfect person. All right, so that's a, that's a little something explained from C.S. Lewis. Amen.